Looks like it's gonna rain. I'm ready. Last week, we talked about Saul and how that he wanted to hurt Christians. He was on his way to Damascus so that he could arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem where they could be beaten or even killed. But Jesus appeared to him on that road and asked him, why did you want to hurt Jesus? After he was blinded and led by the hand to Damascus, after three days, Ananias came to him and laid hands on him and told him, Brother Saul, I'm here so that you can receive sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And Saul got his sight back. He was ready to serve God. For three years, he learned about God. God sent him out into the desert of Arabia, where there he learned all about Jesus and how that he was God's son. And he was the Messiah that he had been looking for. And when he was in Damascus, he preached about Jesus. They were astonished that this was the man who wanted to kill Christians, was now using the scriptures to prove that Jesus was God's son. You know who wasn't happy about that? The Jews were not at all happy. They started making a plan. They were acting like Saul used to act. Well, their plan was to arrest him. So they started watching the gates to see if they could catch him getting out. You see, Damascus was a city surrounded by walls and the only way in or out were through the gates. So they watched the gates. The rain. They watched the gates. Day and night, they watched the gates. The Christians there made a plan. They got a huge basket. A huge basket. And at night, they put Saul in the basket. And they took ropes and they led him down that wall with the ropes through an opening. And Saul was safe. He went to Jerusalem. You know, he knew that's where so many Christians were and that they would want to see him. He couldn't wait, I'm sure, to tell them all he had learned about Jesus and how excited he was for it. But those Christians had heard about Saul. They didn't know that he had changed. And they had heard how he would arrest people so that they could be beaten or killed. And they were afraid. Well, there was a man named Barnabas. And Barnabas, oh, he's one of those wonderful people we hear about. His name means encourager. He was a great encourager. Well, he went and he got Saul and he took him and he told them about all the things that had happened to Saul, how that Jesus had met him on the road to Damascus, how that Saul had been preaching about Christ. He told them everything. Well, then the people were so happy. They got to talk to Saul and learn all that he knew. And oh, it was a wonderful time, but you know who heard about it? Those Jews heard about it. And they wanted Saul dead. They were going to arrest him. The disciples heard about the plan. And they got Saul out of there. They took him to Caesarea. And from there, he went to Tarsus. You remember where you've heard of Tarsus? That's where Saul was from. That's his hometown. He was going back to his family. You know, his family would have been Jews too. I wonder if he was able to teach them about Christ. Or if they rejected him and didn't want anything to do with him. I don't know. Well, the church was growing. It was growing so fast. People everywhere were learning about Jesus and it was so wonderful. They were happy to know all about him. 
Well, the Christians in Jerusalem heard about how it was spreading, and it was even spreading in a town called Antioch, and they sent Barnabas there. And Barnabas, remember, he's the encourager. He was so happy to hear about all the people who were learning about Jesus. Even people who weren't Jews were learning to love Jesus. Well, he decided he needed to go to Tarsus and find Saul. He found him and he brought him to Antioch. And there they worked together, teaching all the people about Jesus loving him. Oh, you know, God really did have a plan for Saul. He had a wonderful plan, a plan to take care of him. When they were trying to kill him in Damascus, God sent Christians to take care of him. Saul could trust God. In Jerusalem, when the Jews wanted to kill him, God took care of him. Saul could trust God. You know, it started to rain. My umbrella is protecting me. God, in a little bit of a way, is kind of like our umbrella. He's taking care of us. He's always, always, always with us. Isn't that a beautiful thought? David knew what it was like to be afraid. He also knew what it was like to trust God. So many times, people would try to hurt David. His enemies, his king, one time even a son. He had to hide. He hid in other countries, sometimes in caves. But he always knew he could trust God. He wrote a psalm about it. He wrote many psalms. The one I'm thinking about is Psalm 56. He said, when I am afraid, I will trust in you, in God, whose name I praise. I know a song about that. Do y'all know this song? When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose name I praise. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose name I praise. You know, if you're ever afraid, that would be a good song to sing, to remind us always with us. We can always trust him. Let's do an activity so that we can remember that God is always there to help us. We can trust him. I want you to go get two paper plates and a marker. Okay, stop the video and go get those, okay? Got them? Okay, now I want you to put a paper plate on top of your head, upside down. You ready? In your other hand, you're going to hold the marker. Now, without looking, I want you to draw the things that I'm telling you to. Are you ready? Okay. On that paper plate, draw a house. It's hard not seeing it, isn't it? Okay. Now, still don't look. Draw a sun in the sky. If you haven't done it already, put a chimney and windows on the house. Ready? Draw a line where the ground should be. Add flowers coming up from the ground. Put a happy face on that sun. 
draw a tree on the side of the house. Now, add a person under the tree. You got it? What did it look like? I'll show you what mine looked like. <laughs> Not very good, is it? Okay, now, you need to go get somebody to help you. Someone who is good at holding your hand. I'll stop the video. You stop the video and go get them. You got, got a good helper? Okay, now put another plate on top of your head. I'm going to read the same instructions. But this time, your helper is going to put your hand where it should go. They're not going to draw it for you but they're gonna start you in the right place. Are you ready? We're gonna do it again. Draw a house. Draw a sun in the sky. Put a chimney and windows on the house. Draw a line where the ground should be. Add flowers coming up from the ground. Put a happy face on the sun. Draw a tree on the side of the house. And add a person under the tree. Now, I want you to look at that picture. Is it any better? This was my old one. And this is the one where I had help. You see, God is our help. He is our hand. He is the one who is guiding us, who protects us, who takes good care of us. He's our umbrella. It did start raining. He's our protection. We can trust him. He has promised that he will take care of us. You know, Saul had to go through a whole lot of things. He was beaten. He was arrested. He was stoned. But even in those hard times, he knew that God was there. He had a promise for him. God had told him he was going to speak to the Jews and to the people who weren't Jews. He's kept those parts of his promise. He's still got the kings to go. Do you think that's going to happen? God promised it, so I'm sure it will. We'll see you guys next week, and we can learn more about